So here's the situation. I wanted a TIG welder, and I went through a lot of research trying to figure out which one I wanted. And so I'm going to show you why I chose the Prime Weld as my choice for a AC-DC TIG welder. So I started with three core requirements. They all had to do this. I wasn't even going to look at anything else. It wasn't an AC-DC TIG that didn't have a dual voltage. I wanted 120 volts just in case I want to take it somewhere. Or there's not a 240 volt plug somewhere that I need to use it. And most importantly, it had to be under $1,000. I know there's some really great ones out there like the Miller Dynasty, but that's just really kind of far out of my price range for right now for just learning. What I learned then is that you could focus on three different things. Once you had those three core components, you could look at the warranty, you can look and see what it comes with, and then you can see what maybe bonuses each welder had. And that's why I chose the Prime Weld. Let's go through the ones I didn't choose first. The one that I wanted to put in my top three, but I ultimately didn't here, was the Everlast. And the real reason I love this one is that it has a five-year warranty, and it's made by a company that's got a really good reputation. So I thought long and hard about this. Uh, there was a one thing it didn't have, which was the pedal, and the pedal is, can be quite expensive to get a good pedal for these things. And so I ended up just not putting it up there in the top three. I think it's probably a really nice welder, and if, I think if you choose it, you'll be very happy with it. But for me, that additional cost I was going to have to put out just kind of knocked it out of the contention. Next up was this Lodos and this is a really nice looking welder and it's made by a company that seems to have a pretty decent reputation but for the price it doesn't come with a gun, it doesn't come with a regulator, it doesn't have a pedal. This really might be a good choice for somebody who already has those things though. If you already have it and you just want to pick up another welder this really could be a nice choice especially for the price of $659. Uh, it only has a one-year warranty which is fine, it's not a big deal. But for me, it just didn't make the top three. The next one that I really liked was the Yes Welder. This company seems to be doing a lot of really good things in trying to keep prices down and, and make a decent product. There's a couple guys out there like Mike Festiva who really like the Yes Welder lineup. And so anyways, I have high hopes for these things. But for me, it just didn't quite make sense. It had a one-year warranty, which was good. But uh, the problem with a lot of these warranties is that after the first 30 days, you have to pay shipping and that's true of everything except for the prime weld which is the main reason i chose the prime weld so anyways this is a very nice little looking welder has decent specs the gun is nothing special uh, the pedal looks decent the regulator isn't exactly the style i like but the price is pretty decent at 749 dollars and there's always some kind of coupon you can use the code mike festiva to give that guy some credit he's a he's a pretty good at youtube personality and so the it varies, but $749 is the list price, and there's always some kind of special going on. And now we come to the three finalists. So these were chosen uh, by me, and I debated for far too long and really overthought it before ending up with the prime one. So the third finalist, the AHP Alpha TIG 203XI. This is their new model. It's not out yet. It'll be out at the end of March. I'm making this in early March of 2021. The re thing I really liked about this is that it has lift TIG. It is the only one in this price range that also has lift TIG in addition to HF TIG. And lift TIG can be pretty useful if you're near some electronics that are very sensitive. And so, wow, that really made this tempting. Like That is a fantastic feature in this price range. It is the only one. It also has power for a cooler, which is nice. And I think that's making uh, Prime Weld step up its game too has a digital thickness selection. This really, I think, is going to be the future. One of the weird things about it, though, is it requires 40 amps at 120 volts, and I actually emailed them to ask if that was true, and they said yes, and so that may not be something that everyone has. I don't know if it's really going to require 40 amps, so at 120 volts. That might just be on the most extreme settings. Anyway, I really like this. I think this is going to be a hit for them. Uh, it's quite good. The other thing, I asked them if they you know, could either cut the price or if they could include a CK torch, and that's apparently not really part of the plan at the moment. I wish they would because I think that's what makes my other two finalists the most competitive, the torch. The Weld Pro AC-DC 200GD. This thing is just has all the great accessories and has a really nice interface. I love this type of interface on these TIGs. It's so cool where you just kind of click through and you can set everything digitally. I love that. And that's what the Lotos had as well. But what really just makes this stand apart is that it has, one, a nice ground clamp. 
Uh, none of the others have a ground clamp this nice. And, you know, that costs you a little bit of money to upgrade to, and you will eventually have to upgrade to this ground clamp if you use a lot. But most importantly, it comes with the CK Worldwide Torch. And that is a supposedly just a really nice torch. People absolutely love them when they have them. And the price is pretty decent. It came in right now at Amazon at $823 after a $45 coupon. So they're trying to stay competitive. And overall, I really do think this is a competitive package. The reason I didn't choose it, though, is the warranty. It has a nice three-year warranty, but you do have to pay shipping after the first 30 days. And, and that can get pretty expensive on something like this. And so, man, it just... It was really close, though. I spent a lot of time. This ended up in my cart a few times, and I just didn't quite pull the trigger on it. But, uh, you know, it, it just really came down to overthinking it. And another problem with these is that not many people have them and have been using them where I can watch on YouTube. And so, hey, well, that's a bit of a problem. They really are going to have to work a little bit on evangelism. And so I chose the Prime World. And the reason why is because it has the best warranty and also it's been around a while and people do seem to really use them and, and enjoy them and you can watch people using them on YouTube and you know again that's maybe not the best reason but it's showing that hey these things really do work and there's you know reasonable number of stories of people who have uh, done bad things to them or it has failed and they've paid the shipping and have shipped it back and gotten a new one and so you know again it's just these are what I'm looking for in uh, I just don't want it to be too much of a hassle, and I think that's what this is. It's going to be hard enough to learn how to weld, and I don't want to have to worry about the machine too much. One thing that's cool, though, I think they've added, and it's not even on their website, is that it has a water cooler plug. If you look on the website pictures, it's not there, but it does have one when you look at it in real life. Okay, let's go through a couple other things here. So I made some charts because, of course, so by price, the cheapest is the AHP, the one that the older version of the AHP, uh, $600. And then the most expensive is the Weld Pro that comes in, and you know, a little over 800. And the Prime Weld is the one I chose, of course, there in the green. So the two, the other two contenders were in orange. The other contention I had here was weight, so they range between about 30 and 50 pounds. The Prime Weld comes in at 40 pounds, so right there in the middle. The 203XI is actually kind of heavy, which was a little bit surprising, but that's fine too. The Weld Pro was really light. That was actually another point in its favor was the lightness because I do think I'm going to actually end up carrying this around to different locations periodically. And then one thing that I really thought was going to be a problem that maybe didn't really end up being much of a problem was the size. I really thought the Prime Weld was going to be a lot bigger in person than it is. Just It's hard to tell from videos sometimes, especially when people have them up on carts, but the Prime Weld is large. The Weld Pro, in addition to being light, is relatively small. So that's a consideration. Well, guess what? It came in today. And I got to actually see how big this is. And it's not bad. Look, so next to it is my little Chicago Electric Welding. It's just a little flux core welder. One of the smallest ones that you can get at Harbor Freight. Maybe the smallest. And, well, yes, it is a lot smaller than the Prime Weld. The Prime Weld wasn't quite as big as I thought it was going to be. It is pretty heavy, though. It really feels all of that 40 pounds you're carrying around because it's a little bit hard to get a good handle on it but you know what it wasn't too bad it was a really a decent size so that one major concern i had about size didn't really end up being a huge problem because i just I don't have a whole lot of space and i was wanting to make sure it could be as most efficient as possible with it oh yeah remember how i told you that it has a water cooler yep there it is down there i'll even make a little extra video about that because it doesn't even appear on their website in the picture it's just a little bit of a description anyway can't wait to get to use it, and that starts after I eat the tabling. All right, well, use the comments, and uh, let me know what you would choose, and happy welding.